Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we're doing a BIOS flashback on our motherboard here. This is the MSI Z790 Carbon Wi Fi. We're going to be updating this so it can support 14th gen processors. With MSI boards, you're not always sure what BIOS is actually on the board. So, before you start your build, it's probably a good idea just to grab yourself a USB stick and do a BIOS flashback just so you know it's got the latest version on it anyway, and all the other security fixes, as there are numerous ones for both Intel and AMD, so it's always worth updating it. So, what are you going to actually need to perform this? So, you're going to need obviously motherboard itself, somewhere firm and stable to actually perform the flashback on. Uh, we're going to be using the motherboard box. You will also need a USB drive under 32 gigs so this is a fat 32 formatted drive or at least it will be if you've got a drive which is larger than 32 gigabytes you're going to struggle to get a fat 32 partition on it there are ways you can shrink it i'll link those videos in the video description also so if you want to do that you can do but ideally a smaller drive is better you'll also need a power supply because you're going to need to power up the motherboard there's two leads you're going to need to connect one of which is the 12 volt eps connection otherwise known as a cpu power cable and also you'll need your main 24 pin power cable and also a power source from the wall. Other than that, that is pretty much it in terms of hardware. In terms of software, you're going to need access to a PC, which you can actually put the USB drive into. So a Macintosh, a laptop, another desktop PC, maybe something at your local library, whichever way you want to do it, it's entirely up to you, but we'll need a USB drive. So let's head over to the MSI website now and we'll download the BIOS, format our drive and get this all set up and then we'll come back and do the actual BIOS flash. Okay, so we'll start off with our Windows desktop. So I'm gonna put the uh, flash drive in. It looks like this is one I've used previously. So let's go ahead and format this drive just to be on the safe side. So we'll right click on the USB drive. We will choose format and FAT32 is what we want. Allocation size, you can set to default. And if there's anything in the volume label, you can remove that. Obviously make sure there's nothing on the drive you actually need. Otherwise you're safe to continue. Click on start. You'll get a warning saying, do you sure you want to do this? Yes, we do. So click OK. And there we go. There is our drive formatted and ready. The next thing to do is to find the actual BIOS file. I'll put links for this in the video description for the MSI website, but just find your particular board. Head over to the support tab and then go down to BIOS. And then you'll see there's a load of different BIOSes available. Ideally, you want to go for the latest one. If you're not keen on betas, those generally tend to be very common these days, uh, especially with some of the updates which are happening on a very thick and fast basis. So the latest two are both betas. The last non-beta was from the 18th of January. It is currently the end of February. So potentially you might want to go for that one, but I'm going to go ahead with the latest beta version, which supports up to 256 gigabytes of RAM. So click on download, choose somewhere to save it. I'm going to save it to the Windows desktop for simplicity. Click on save. And when that's done, we can minimize this. There is our downloaded zip folder. So we're going to need to extract this. Right click, choose extract all, and just extract it to its default location. This will give you your folder with the files inside. So if we double click on that one, you can see there's a text file, which is information about the BAS file itself. And the BAS file is there. It's currently known as a 1B3 file, and it's 32 megabytes or 32,768 kilobytes. We need to rename this to something the motherboard can actually recognize and actually make use of. So we're gonna double click on this and type in msi.rom. So the file extension is ROM. When you're happy, press enter. You'll get a message saying it might become unusable. Do you wanna change it? Yes, we do. And there we go, so that is our file ready. So now we can right click on that, choose copy, Head over to our USB drive, right click and choose paste. You can do control C, control V should you wish to, choice is yours. So that is that done. So we're happy that is ready so we can eject that drive. And that is it for the PC part. Now head over to our motherboard and we can perform our BOSS flashback. Okay, so that is the BIOS flashback on our USB stick. So let's go ahead and stick this into the motherboard. If we take a look at the ports on the back, you'll see it's clearly labeled up. There is actually a white rectangle around the port which you need to stick it into, which is this top one here. So we'll stick that in. If you're not too sure where the BIOS flashback button is, you've got three buttons on the back here. The BIOS flashback one is the middle one, so we'll be needing to press that shortly. But first of all, we need to supply some power to the motherboard. So we've got our two connections, one of which is the 24 pin main power connection, which goes on the right hand side of the board. 
make sure that is firmly connected and locked into position. And then we need our EPS, which is this one here in the top. So you can plug it into either one of those, whichever you choose is absolutely fine. So now this is all connected up, we can turn on our power supply. So we'll flick the power switch on. And the next thing to do, we can just press and hold the BOSS flashback button for about three seconds. And we should see the board spring into life and the flashing LED on the back there. Once that's started the process, we'll let it carry on do its thing. It should take anywhere between three to six minutes. If yours is flashing for significantly longer, it's not reading the drive correctly. So maybe you want to try a different drive, different format, or possibly you've got the wrong file. If it flashes a couple of times and stops immediately, again, similar sort of thing, either the drive is not compatible or there's something actually on the system which is preventing it from doing it. This is why I always try and do this on a bare board because that way you don't have to go through all the hassle of working out which of the other devices is potentially preventing your motherboard from flashing. So ideally do this as a bare unit with nothing installed whatsoever. So now we can go over to the buttons on the back there and press the middle one. We'll press and hold it for a couple of seconds. One, two, three, and then release. And you can see the button is now flashing, which is awesome. The board itself has kind of come to life a little bit. So we've got some RGB over the top of the VRM heatsink. Also our CPU LED is on. And also from our digital display there, we've got two lines on there to signify that it's in BOSS flash mode. Also, we can see the flashing there. So it means something is happening. So essentially all we need to do now is just to be a little bit patient, wait and let it do its thing. And uh, we'll come back when it's done. And there we go. So that was the end of the flash. The system's turned off, I heard a click, and it's now rebooting itself. Obviously there's no process or anything in there, so we're still gonna get the two slashes in the top for our diagnostic and also our red LED for the CPU. But that is it. We can now turn off the power supply and uh, continue with the rest of our build. So that is effectively it. At this point now, uh, you're possibly wondering, well, what do you do next? Well, ultimately just turn off the power supply. So just kill the power, either at the wall or on the power supply itself. Remove your USB stick. If you want to now, it's possibly a good idea. If you can, put in some RAM, put in your processor, potentially a graphics card as well if you need one, if you don't have integrated graphics on your Intel processor, and just see if the system will post, see if you can get an output, connect it up to your HDMI or your DisplayPort monitor, obviously HDMI only if you're using the motherboard. Just make sure you get a signal I would do that to start with before you do full assembly, but ultimately it's down to you how you proceed from here. But hopefully this is uh, giving you a little bit of confidence on how to do the BOSS flashback on this particular motherboard. If you've got any comments or questions, feel free to let me know in that comment section below. And also check out the comment section as well, and also the video description for links to the BIOSes and any of the other components that we've used here today. I think that's going to wrap this one up. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. If you have, smash that like button. If you want to see more content like this on a daily basis, then maybe consider hitting the subscribe button, then also the chime notification. That way you know there's a future video releases. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.